Oh my gosh, just laughing a little bit behind the scenes right here as uh, we're chatting a little bit about life. And uh, then this new topic came up, what we are going to discuss today on the It Takes Grit podcast. And I think it's just so, so relevant uh, for, for everybody to listen to this episode um, and to really just to understand uh, that life happens for us, how we can have grace in everything that's going along, um, and navigating life's pivot. Uh, so that's what we're going to be tackling today. But welcome, everybody, to the It Takes Script podcast. I am so excited that you are here and that you are listening. And if this was shared by somebody for you to listen to, well, it's because they love you. And if you have not already shared this podcast with somebody that you love or a friend or even on your social media, please do so that we can share the gift of finding your grit and uh, being bold in 2024. All right, so we are going to talk all things navigating life's pivots and adapting to change with grace. And I think that, you know, we have to always be open to new things in life because if we are so attached to the outcome of what we believe our, believe that our life should be like, sometimes we close the door for things that are really meant for us right? I mean, we had a great uh, podcast the other week about beliefs, right? Stepping into your boldness. Uh, But we're going to really talk about sometimes there is a need for change, right? And so, you know, in my life, you know, the look at the last like 15 years, there's been so much change. Uh, I was actually just in Slovenia on stage sharing my story. And I was sharing my story again in in Daytona Beach, uh, both in March of this year. And when I was looking back at my life and all of the crazy pivots that I've made, I was like, none of this makes any sense. And I'll dive into a little bit about my story. Um, For those of you who don't know, I think there's quite a few segments of what I've been up to for the last 20 years uh, that might may surprise you. And the amount of pivots that I've got to take in life and, you know, being able to adapt with those with with grace and and not beating myself up for maybe going down a path that I thought was going to be my career and then deciding, actually, that's not what I want to do. And so what we're really going to be focusing on is... Is that, is that understanding that pivoting is, is good, right? And that being that open to change. So I remember, you know, I got, I got started, you know, in England being on a reality TV show when I was 18 years old. I had no idea what it was about, to be honest. I just turned up for what I thought was a job interview. And there was a line of 4,000 people. And I was like, what is this? But I'd already traveled from Eastbourne to London, which is an hour and a half away. And I thought, you know what? I'm here. I'm just going to, I'm just going to join. And I'd just done my A-levels. Uh, I went to a private school for a couple of years that, I mean, I love the school, uh, but I got severely bullied there. It was not a great experience. I went through an eating disorder. Uh, I didn't want to go to university. Uh, I wanted to teach myself a degree online. I never had the desire, you know, to go to university. Um, and I, I didn't want to have a gap year in travel. I, I just wanted to honestly get to work. And so I, I auditioned to be on this reality TV show. And I it was one of the final 12. And I was on this show. And it was about people who had potential to be a television producer. And I managed to get to the final week and I didn't win, but I had the most unbelievable experience, you know, going to go to the national TV awards in a two and a half thousand dollar dress, uh, you know, just being able to be, you know, inside of the TV world and just, and, and having ideas and being creative. And then, you know, I do a complete 180 switch. I wanted to live in London. So I decided that, uh, you know, I needed to, to earn enough income to live in London. And my boyfriend at the time, uh, he worked for an investment bank and I was like, you know what? banking. That's great. They earn great money. That's going to get me to London, even though I've only got PE, sports, and a reality TV show on my resume, or CV as we call it in the UK. Uh, No problem. I'm going to now go and, 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 and work in a bank. And so the moral of that story is, you know, I had no real background in TV producing, and I certainly didn't have any background in being a banker. And I think that oftentimes when we think about pivoting in life, we feel like we have to know everything. And I'm going to keep going with my story because it's going to get more wild and crazy. And you're going to be like, if Rebecca can pivot from that to that, I can pivot from what I want to do right now. And I can do it with grace. And I can have an excitement about it too. So, you know, I reached out to over 100 recruitment agencies, 100 recruitment agencies in London. And, you know, a lot of them were like, okay, you want to, you want to work in banking? Um, I don't really think that that makes sense because of what you've already done in your life. Um, but I managed to get three interviews. And I think what's really important is how many people did I reach out to? 
reached out to 100 recruitment agencies, not job interviews, 100. And I managed to get uh, an interview at HSBC, Bloomberg, and Citigroup. So I met with this agent uh, from, the, uh, from the recruitment agency, the one person that got back to me. And, and he said, Rebecca, at the end of the interview, when they say, do you have any further questions? Just say, yes, is there any reason why you wouldn't hire me? And that's a pretty bold thing to say. And I was only 18, 19 at the time. But I used it and I actually got all three interviews. I got all three jobs at HSBC, Bloomberg and Citigroup. I ended up taking the one at Citigroup Investment Bank because it was the most paid. It was actually 27,000 pounds and 100. Uh, I remember that vividly. And I moved to London and I worked for an investment bank doing something called corporate actions. Do you guys even know what corporate actions are? Great, me either. I did not know what they were at the beginning. Guess what? They onboarded me. They taught me everything. Because I actually said, my reply, when they said, do you have any other questions? And I said, is there any reason that you wouldn't hire me? They said, well, you don't really have the credentials. And I said, perfect. I'm a blank canvas. You can teach me everything that you want me to learn. I'm going to have no outside influence. I'm going to have no ideas of how else to do it apart from the way that you want me to do it. I'm gonna be the perfect blank canvas and you can train me exactly how you need to train me. And I think sometimes when we come into a new opportunity, a new job, uh, a new pivot, we feel like we have to know everything. And actually, it's much better that we don't know everything because the person that is mentoring you or onboarding you is gonna be able to teach you exactly how they did it and you're not gonna have any other outside theories coming in which slow you down. So when I first got started in the bank, I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything about banking. I didn't even like know what bank I was with, right? But I did it anyway. And I was lasted there for about nine months and it was okay. It really wasn't my passion, my excitement. And I also started to become a club promoter on the side. I started going out in London. I started to get connected with other cl uh, pro uh, club promoters and I became a club promoter. And I was uh, making enough money in that that I could stop my job as an investment banker because I just really wasn't loving that. And so I pivoted. I went from an investment banker to a club promoter. And being a club promoter gave me the flexibility to be able to do lots of other things. So that's when I started to kind of, you know, get myself out there for auditions. I was a backing dancer, I was in a girl band, I was your club promoter, I was, you know, your ring girl in the cage rage fights. I mean, I was like doing all sorts of different things. And then I pivoted again. I decided that, you know what? After I watched the news and I saw that volcano ash cloud that grounded all the planes in Iceland, I saw a plane land and I literally went, I'm going to be a pilot. And that was my idea. And guess what? When you have an idea, just go for it and figure it out later. Did I have any idea how to fly a plane? No. Did I have any idea about what steps I needed to take to be able to become a pilot? No. But what did I do? I found a school to go to. I got started. I flew all the way from, from England to California. I got myself uh, a place to stay. I got myself uh, an incredible uh, uh, flight school that actually I showed up for for two days and realized it wasn't the right flight school. So I just switched literally within the first like week or two. I met somebody on, a, on, on the hotel bus that said that they were going to this other flight school and I pivoted and I changed. I didn't say, oh, I just don't like this flight school. I don't like the planes. I think I'm just gonna give up. No. I pivoted, I pivoted and I went to a different flight school. Now, has club promoting got anything to do with flying planes? No. Has banking got anything to do with being in a girl band? No. So will you stop thinking that you need experience or you need knowledge or you need anything to change and pivot and be successful? And also, it doesn't matter what age you are. You can pivot and you can switch and you can change whenever you want. And I think that we need a need for change, right? We need to try something new. We need to get outside of our comfort zone. We need to pivot, we need to change. We need to move things and shake things up a little bit. And so over the last you know, 20 years, I have moved from one thing to the other. One thing has been consistent for the last 10 years of the nutrition company I've worked with and also making workout videos on YouTube. They're the only two consistent things I've done and that I'm gonna continue to do. But I didn't know anything about YouTube when I first got started. 
I didn't know anything about filming workout videos. I didn't even have my certification when I went from my first job interview to be on a YouTube channel. You know, once I got to America and I did my pilot's license, I was like, uh, oops, I don't think I want to be a pilot anymore, but I do love California. I love California. I love the palm trees. I'm like, I'm going to find a way to get myself over to California. I had no idea how I was going to do that, but I managed to find the right person to help me get an O1 visa. And I got over there and I just started to work. And that's when I got my audition to be on the YouTube channel exit. Again, I did not have my personal training license. I had done a lot of sports growing up, but I didn't know anything about workouts. There was an ab workout that I loved to do on YouTube, like a lot. There was an eight minute ab workout that was done in like the, the 70s or the 80s. And uh, I was doing that video, but that's the only exposure that I had. So I learned YouTube. And then guess what? Exit stopped filming. So I had to learn how to have my own YouTube channel. And then I wanted an app. So I had to learn how to do that. Then I wanted merchandise. I had to figure out how do I connect with people in different suppliers to get that? How do I start, you know, a nutrition company? How do I start group coaching? I didn't know how to do any of these things. How do I start a fit camp? How do I create an event? <sighs> just take a moment right now and just realize that I had no knowledge or background or understanding about any of the things that I got started. But I just pivoted because I made a choice and I did it with a lot of grace. I didn't beat myself up for the things that I didn't know. I just said, great, what do I know? Even though it was very little, I'm gonna use that. And then for the things that I don't know, I'm just gonna have a little bit of grace. I have a little bit of grace on myself and be like, you know what, I'm gonna figure it out. I'll learn it. It's gonna take a while to learn, but that's okay. We've got to learn these things. So that need for change. But let's talk about some strategies for a smooth transition. I think I kind of touched about it a little bit, just sharing my story about how important it is to give yourself grace in a transition. And the hallucination that you are going to remember everything, the hallucination that how is it even possible that you're going to know everything at the beginning? It's not. That's crazy. That's your ego talking, thinking, oh, I should know all this. No, 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 that's your ego. Coming into something new, the strategy for that smooth transition is to have grace, is to stay connected, stay close to the fire, make sure that you're doing your best. That's it. That's all you've got to focus on. Because if you're just doing your best, you're staying close to the fire and you're giving yourself grace for the things that you don't know, knowing that you will learn those things. I'm still learning things today about YouTube, about the nutrition company I work with, about social media. Why? Because there's always something new. There's always something that's changing. There's always a pivot that's happening. There's always something that's going. There's always something that's being added. There's always some new tool to use. There's some new strategy. There's also some new method or way of doing something. I'm constantly learning. So to think that when you start something new that you're gonna know everything, please get yourself off that pedestal thinking that you should know everything and that you should have everything down because that's absolutely crazy talk. It's crazy, it's wild to even think that you should know everything. Like, who do you think you are? If you got somebody else, do you think you're looking at somebody else going, wow, they should really have their everything together, they should really have their shit together, it all should be ready and perfect? No, my stuff is not perfect. I'm evolving, I'm learning all the time, and I'm giving myself grace through it. Even right now, going through a pivot, but I'm giving myself grace, I'm doing the best that I can. Like yesterday, there was probably still, five hours of work that I could have done, but it was like 11 o'clock at night. I'm like, I have to go to sleep, right? I'm gonna give my great, myself grace that I haven't got back to everybody straight away that I need to. I haven't implemented everything that I need to, but guess what? I'm working and I'm doing my best and I'm pivoting in the areas that I want to. So you're never gonna be able to do everything all at once, right? Give yourself grace for that. And throughout that, to be able to adapt to pivots, with change and grace, it's so important that we maintain our emotional and mental well-being. Because when you are pivoting and you are learning something new, it's so key to really focus on your workouts, hydration, nutrition, 
meditation, personal development, right? Because otherwise you get so burned out and exhausted. Like I remember when I was doing my pilot's license and I flew back to the UK and I was at ground school for six months and I look back at those times and I worked out, right? But I definitely didn't know about nutrition back then. So I was drinking a lot of Red Bull. I know, crazy, right? I mean, I think we all used to before we knew what a mega tea was, but we all were drinking Red Bull. And I know that if I look back there, my mental well-being would have been better if I had just looked after myself a little more, if I'd been introduced to personal development, and I wasn't back then. So I think that when we are pivoting and we're changing and we're doing something new, your mental and emotional well-being is so key. It's so vital for our success in that pivot because if you feel exhausted, because you haven't got your exercise in, or maybe you're resentful because you haven't got your exercise in, and you're exhausted because you're not having the right nutrition, or you haven't had enough sleep, is your confidence up or down about the new thing that you're starting? It's down. Because what happens with our energy? When our energy is down, do we have less confidence or more? Less. And our energy is typically down, not because we are working so much, you can work a lot, but make sure that you're adding in great nutrition, you're adding in great sleep, you're adding in great workouts, meditation, rest, getting outside, fresh air. That's what's gonna reset you. You know, even late last night, it's, you know, nine o'clock at night, and it's like, okay, well, we're gonna kind of unwinding to bed, but like, let's just jump in the jacuzzi and do an ice bath, right? That was just a reset. Maybe it's for you going out for a little walk or what, whatever that is, having a cold shower, having a bath, right? Doing something that's going to, Get, fill your cup back up before you just hit the pillow. Because a lot of times what we do is we're like, oh my gosh, we're so exhausted, we're so tired, I can't wait to just get to bed. But if you just took a couple of rests throughout the day to reset, rest, recharge, and refuel, like Luke says, you're gonna feel so much better. And you're gonna sleep better, and then the next day you're not gonna feel as, you're not gonna feel like you're trying to catch up, right? So as you're going through that transition, and you wanna make it smooth, and you wanna have grace, you've gotta work out, you've gotta exercise, you've gotta feed your body great nutrition, and that's what's gonna help your mental and emotional well-being, okay? And so just a couple of tools to, to execute those, right? To make sure that as we are navigating life's pivots, and life's pivots, it could be too that something happens in a relationship, a relationship changes, or you get thrown a curveball in life, right? Even if something traumatic or challenging has happened for you, right? It's always happening for us, not to us. How can you still adapt to that situation challenge with grace? Because if you don't, if you get emotional or if you want to fight back or if you get angry or if you get hateful or you get jealous, as those lives give you the pivot, what's gonna happen is you, it's gonna eat you up inside. And you're not going to be able to go through those life pivots with grace, right? When something happens for you, are you somebody that reacts? Are you somebody that gets mad, that gets angry? Or are you someone that's like, okay, this, this is a life curveball that happened to me, but I'm gonna make sure that I adapt with grace. I'm not gonna allow somebody else's negative behavior or you know, somebody breaking up with me or whatever it might be, change my grace that I'm gonna have through this period. Because why? It's gonna take your energy. And we know that you know, if you're ever trying to destroy somebody, it's not you that, it's not them that they're gonna destroy, you're gonna destroy yourself, right? It always happens, the more you try to tear other people down, you're going to end up tearing yourself down. And the only person that you're gonna have to blame is you. So when we're navigating life's pivots, whether it's a job or whether it's a relationship or whether it's a curveball that gets thrown to us, remember that there always has to be that way that we can adapt to change with grace. So how, how do you do that? How do you do that? How do you not react? Well, you first of all, just take a couple of deep breaths. When someone does something for you, to you, or something happens or whatever it is, just, just be still. Be still with yourself, don't react, just take a couple of deep breaths. And know that there's always a bigger vision and picture for you, and this is just your life pivoting. For change, that's all it is. 
So you can either utilize that challenge, that pivot, that situation, you can utilize it to help you grow, to have a more emotional mastery, to make you more stronger, to create more growth, to have more resilience, more grit, more bravery, more boldness. And that's gonna happen when you adapt to the change with grace. If you choose the other, the opposite, when one of life's happens for you, you pivot, whether it's with a job, a new opportunity, a relationship, and you get worked up and you get stressed and you react and you're like, I can't do this, I don't understand this, and I don't like this, and blame, 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 blame. You are not adapting through grace. You are adapting through resistance, with anger, with hatred, with frustration. And that is not going to serve you. So today, we're going to really focus, as we move forward from this podcast today, is any time that there is a life pivot, navigating it, adapting to the change with grace. And when you realize that and you just take a couple of deep breaths and you focus on your mental, emotional mastery and you focus on exercise and eating clean and all of those amazing things, it's going to help so much with your quality of life. Because when you're feeling angry, when you're feeling frustrated, when you're feeling resentful, when you're feeling hatred, or you're feeling like, oh, I just don't understand this, or I can't get this done, or I can't even learn this, or why did this person do this, or blame, 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 it's only gonna pull yourself down. So whatever it is that is a pivot in your life right now, take a deep breath, have some grace as you're going through the change, and know that as long as you just put your focus where it needs to be, everything is gonna work out just fine. And I'm so excited about the pivots that I'm making in my life. If you haven't already checked out how to become an ambassador, uh, you can check out the video below. It's just a quick short video that maybe gives you a little bit of an introduction. And then after that, we can jump on a one-on-one -on -one call together. Uh, very excited to meet lots of you uh, who have not already got started but have watched the video uh, and ready now to take that next step into booking a call with me. So you can either reach out to me on Rebecca Louise uh, Nutrition on my Instagram, or you can just send me an email, contact at rebecca-louise.com. Uh, or again, you can just uh, send me the text message through uh, when you watch the video and we will set up a one-on-one -on -one call to go through your goals and help you pivot to creating the life that you want. Awesome job for showing up today. I'm so proud of you. Let's crush it. Let's be bold. Let's have grace as we transition through life's pivots and let's have and contain our grit. Love you guys. Bye.